Luke chapter 13, we're going to begin our reading this morning in verse 22. Um, it's in our reading this morning that a really good question is asked. Jesus, well, few, are few being saved? That's a really good question. You know, obviously, that question is coming as a result of, I believe, the message that, that Jesus was teaching and proclaiming. You know, it really bugs me that, that there are some who have left people with the impression that Christianity is, well, it's some kind of spectator sport, that it's enough just to sit back with little commitment or, or little effort to, to simply just lean on grace and, and show up every so often, throw your hands in the air and listen to, to a band play and some guy get up and make you feel good. And then everyone is just going to, well, everybody's just going to go to heaven. Well, that sounds wonderful. And listen, I'm not minimizing grace. Uh, let, let's be clear, though. Jesus never said that, that being a Christian was going to be easy, nor that the proper response to his grace is just to sit around with, with little to no commitment. So don't take my word for it. I want you to listen to Jesus. What Jesus says this morning in Luke chapter 22, I want to begin reading at verse 22. It says that he was passing through from one village, from one city and village to another, teaching and proceeding on his way to Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, are there just a few who are being saved? And he said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Once the head of the house gets up and shuts the door, you begin to stand outside and knock on that door, saying, Lord, open to us, open up to us. And he will answer and answer and say to you, I don't know where you're from. And you will begin to say, we ate, drank in your presence. You taught in our streets. And he will say, I, I tell you, I do not know where you are from, where you're from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves being thrown out. And they will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at the table in the kingdom of God. Behold, some of them are our last who will be first and some who are first will, will be last, who will be last. Just at the time, some Pharisees approached, the saying to him, go away, leave here for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, go and tell that fox, behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow. The third day I reach my goal. Nevertheless, I must journey on today and tomorrow and the next day, for it cannot be that a prophet would perish outside of Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those that are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, just as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. You would not have it. Verse 35, Behold, your house is left to you desolate, and I say to you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes. In the name of the Lord. Lord, are there just a few who are being saved? That's the question. I want you to, to, to let that question sink in, and let's, let, let's, sink, let, let, let's think this through. How would the modern religious world expect Jesus to answer that? I want you to listen to Jesus in verse 24. Strive, he says, to enter. Strive to enter. What's it mean to strive after something? To strive, that's strenuous effort. Strive to enter through the narrow door, he says. For many, I tell you, they'll seek to enter, but they won't be able. And he goes on to describe those who are going to be shocked on the day of judgment, those who had been in close proximity to our Lord. And Jesus says, I'll say, I don't know where you're from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And he described their destination as a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, separated from the righteous. And I'm just reminded, heaven won't be for everyone. Heaven will be for those who strive to enter. Now, Jesus is not saying that we are saved by works alone. That's not what Jesus is saying. He's not arguing here for meritorious works. In some way, we're going to do enough works to, to cancel all of our sin, and we're going, to, we're, going to, and we're going to earn our salvation. That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is grace. It's his sacrifice that gives the sinner hope. That that doesn't mean that our response to grace is not one of strenuous effort working in the kingdom, working out our salvation with, with fear and trembling. It doesn't mean that, that we're not about doing good and spreading good to the best of our ability and telling others about our Lord while there's still time for them. It doesn't mean that we're not in constant preparation, filling our mind with the Spirit of God, resulting in a life characterized by the fruits of the Spirit. Jesus says, strive to enter. Strenuous effort, I would argue, in light of his grace. You know, in Acts chapter 2 at verse 8, for by grace you have been saved, but it doesn't stop there. Through faith. 
And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, right? Not as a result of work, so that no one may boast. But listen to this. For we are his workmanship, created in Jesus. Why? For good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. You know, they go in to tell Jesus that Herod, he wants to kill him. As, as if Jesus didn't know this. He tells them exactly what's going to happen. Jesus knew. He always knew. Jesus knew what he was up against, but he offered them salvation anyway. But they said no. To the Jews, he wanted to bless them, to keep them safe, to provide for them. But they said no. They would kill him, but he would reach his goal on the third day. On the third day, our Lord and Savior was resurrected from the dead, ensuring our own victory over sin, our own victory over death. So here's what I say. Let's strive in response to his grace with everything we have to enter through that narrow door, brethren. Heaven will be worth whatever sacrifices we have to make in the here and now. I hope you'll take this message. I'll take it with you today. You'll think about these things and we'll consider our own lives. Are we striving to enter the narrow gate? Is it important to us? Does our lives, do our decisions, is 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 our passion, is it indicative of ultimately what we profess by way of desiring more than anything else to go to heaven when this life is over? Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, we are so thankful that your son was willing to come to this earth and die on the cross for our sins. Father, we are an undeserving people, but Father, we pray this morning that as we are reminded of how wonderful and great you are, Father, that we, we, we never look at your grace as this, um, this thing in our life that allows us to just be apathetic and, and, and just allows us to just live our lives in a way that is not pleasing to you, Father. But instead, may your grace and your mercy motivate us to give you everything that we have, to totally commit ourselves to you and your cause and bringing others to you, Father. Father, we're so thankful for you, for your son, for that sacrifice that gives us hope. Father, thank you for forgiving our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.